Bonjour. This is Aaron from Aaron Gun Traveling. So today I'm going to be talking about traveling in South Korea and Japan. These two countries are amazing and I love them both very dearly. So in Japan, I spend one month and a little bit more in spring summertime, whereas in Korea, I spend two weeks and a half that was in winter. In this video, I'll be comparing different aspects in terms of traveling in Korea and Japan. And the disclaimer is this video is solely from my observation and my experiences traveling in this country. I love them both I just want to break it down for you so you could see which country did I prefer more so the first thing that I'm comparing the languages in these two countries I don't speak neither Japanese nor Korean so it was slightly difficult for me to navigate through the language barrier both countries has got people um, locals who speak fluent Mandarin which is great for me I think that's because of the sheer amount of tourists from China both Koreans and Japanese struggle a little bit with English proficiency in terms of remote areas I went to Hokkaido in Japan and I went to Jeju Island in Korea they both have minimal to no English it was difficult but in Japan they use kanji and I speak Mandarin it was very easy for me to navigate through the menu because most important words will be in kanji whereas in Korea they use a different alphabet system so I don't understand anything on the menu so I think it's somewhat an unfair comparison because I speak Mandarin so one point for Japan next up food and I think food deserves two points from my perspective my travel itinerary is planned around food I love food that's one of the main reasons I travel whichever country that wins this wins two points Korean food and Japanese food are very 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 different Korean food features heavily on the richness the lusciousness the flavors from many ingredients typically Korean corn syrup gochujang gochugaru doenjang kimchi it is Tasty, fantastic, it's always spicy, which I love. Some of the typical Korean dishes that I really like, gamchatang, dakgalbi, kalguksu, what's it called? Budejige, such a nice after party comfort food. It goes so well with rice, and I love my rice. Japanese food features heavily on the freshness of the ingredient. I can easily imagine a great farm to table experience with Japanese cuisine. Everything is centered around the freshness of the ingredient just a little bit of seasoning to bring out to accentuate the flavors of the ingredient for example one of the most well-known dishes in Japan is sashimi and it's prepared raw another thing I love about Japanese food is I love egg if you drop a fresh raw egg yolk in any of my don like buta don or yakodon I'm the happiest man on earth and they're so good with eggs they do tamagoyaki they do omurice which requires so much skill I have mad respect for Japanese chef. They perfect a knife skill when they have to be a sashimi chef, work so hard behind the grill when they are trying to be a tempanyaki chef. They make the best pastry in Japan. I personally like Korean food more because it's I love spicy food, right? I know this is highly debatable. I know Korean food and Japanese food, you can't really make a good comparison there because they're so different and they're so good each to their own. But I'm just gonna give that two points to Korea because I love Korean food. Okay, moving on so that people don't hate me. Third thing I'm gonna talk about, convenience store. I think Korea and Japan are both very, very proud of their convenience store culture. They are omnipresent. They are everywhere. They're open 24-7. Let's talk about the most memorable thing that I can think of in Japan. I think the convenience store in Japan has the fluffiest bread. I don't even have to go to a bakery to get fluffy bread. Japanese bread is automatically fluffy. Oh, melon ice cream. I think it was a special edition from Hokkaido and I love that melon ice cream. Oh, the fried chicken at the counter. You look at it, you just be like, I'm gonna have this for breakfast, lunch and dinner. It was so good. And in Korea, I think the most memorable thing that I got from Korea is the melon milk. It was so good and... I think convenience store in Korea is also good but I can't really think of more things that make me... Okay, anyways, it's evident that I'm gonna give that point to Japan. The public transport system, both countries, inner city wise, is great. It's punctual, it's clean, wide coverage, you can go anywhere you want. In terms of the public transport ticket, I'm comparing Seoul with Tokyo, which are the capitals of both countries. And I think Seoul might actually be cheaper. I spend less money in Seoul. It doesn't matter how far you go, you pay the same price. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's kind of an unfair comparison towards Japan as well, because I was in Japan during spring summer when like flowers are blooming and there were a lot of tourists. Whereas in Korea, I was there in winter and there's less tourists. In terms of the congestion, Korea is 
there's less people so it was more comfortable whereas in Japan there were a lot more people so I'll give that point to Korea in terms of the transport out of the city you've got a famous rail pass in each country so in Japan it's called Japan Rail Pass and in Korea it's called Korail. I have to say that the Rail Pass in Korea makes more sense. You can do four flexible days where you don't have to travel consecutive days. I can take one day of traveling to travel from Seoul to Daegu, right? I still have three days left but I don't have to use it the next day. So if I like Daegu more, I can just stay there for however long I want. And I think it's valid for 30 days. Obviously, you have to use that three days in the span of 30 days. But it allows more flexibility. And it's cheaper. It's probably $200 for four days. $50 per day. The Japan Rail Pass is also very good. I think it's such a good incentive for the foreigners. In Japan, you could get a 7-day, 14-day, or 21-day Rail Pass. As much as I love the Rail Pass in Japan, it costs $700, $800 for 21 days. If you think about it, it's quite worth it. The Shinkansen especially is very expensive if you buy individual tickets. I went to Nagano, I went to Hokkaido, I went to a few other places where I needed the rail pass. I really like Nagano, which I spent two or three days more. But during that two, three days, I was so stressed out. If I don't go, I lose my consecutive days. It's like I'm losing money. Having said that, it's because I don't normally plan for my itinerary. That's why I love to have flexibility. If your itinerary is jam-packed with activities, with cities that you have to go all the time, then I highly recommend the Japan Rail Pass. In terms of flexibility, I'll give it to Korea. Next up, natural attractions. I think it's really hard to compare in terms of natural attractions because they have quite different geography. So I'll talk about the two islands that both countries are very proud of. Jeju Island and Hokkaido Island. Jeju Island is so pretty in winter. Everywhere was white and there were so many deers. There's Halasan. There's so many beautiful coastal towns. I really love the natural attractions in Jeju Island. Hokkaido, very, very high mountains. I was uh, all blooming because I was there in spring, summer. You can just see a whole mountain of yellow flowers, lavenders, different colored flowers, and dairy farm. I just love Hokkaido. Hiking is more rewarding because mountains are easily like 3,000 meters high. Whereas in Korea, I think the highest mountain is Halasan, which is like 1,000 something. When I did Halasan in winter, it was so good as well. But I love high mountains and I have to give that point Japan. Next up, navigation. Oh my god. It was so hard to navigate in Korea because they don't allow Google Map. Security reason. They use some other apps. They use Kakao Talk, but I don't speak Korean and I don't understand Korean. Whereas in Japan, they use Google Map. Google Map clearly lists which train you should take, how much it costs navigating Japan. Next up, shopping. So shopping is not my big thing because I normally just travel with a backpack which is 7 kilos, sometimes 8 kilos if I wear my jacket plus 5 more shirts inside. I think shopping in Korea is more affordable and for the price you get a pretty premium item. It's easier to bargain in Korea as well. I think people are more open to the idea of bargaining. Whereas in Japan, it's slightly stricter. Things are slightly more expensive. I think I just prefer Korea more in terms of shopping. Next up, couch surfing. As you know, I talked about couch surfing before. I am super big on couch surfing. Couch surfing has changed my life. It's not an overstatement. I think in Seoul, the community is slightly smaller as compared to Japan. So in Tokyo, the couch surfing community is more active. There are more events. More people are willing to reply to my messages. I met a German girl, two Japanese guys, a father from Slovakia and with his daughter, five of us, and we just, it was so random. We just said, let's go for karaoke and we went for karaoke. It was such a great time. They are more receptive to meeting foreigners and to speak English with you, to practice their English as well. And some just want to have fun, to hang out. I would give Japan the point in terms of couch surfing. Now to the ultimate, the party. I love partying. I think a lot of people know that and I've had great parties, mind-blowingly good parties in both Korea and Japan. The nightlife in these two countries are fantastic. I'm talking specifically about Seoul in Korea and Tokyo in Japan. I think it's great that both countries allow drinking on the street. In terms of the music that they play, the Japanese music in Japan and the Korean music in Korea, I like the beats of K-pop more because it's easier to dance to, it's very catchy. And I think people in Korea are more likely to dance and I think it's less awkward for me to dance if I'm not alone. In terms of partying, I love Korean clubs more. They dance more, better music with 
a lot of EDM. I think Korea wins slightly in terms of partying. As a result, I'm sure you can see Korea wins slightly. I regret not spending a bit more time in Korea. I'm not saying that I don't like Japan. I love Japan as well. It's just a uh, when I break it down rationally, there's more reasons for me to love Korea. That's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching. I make a new video every Thursday on food, traveling, and languages. Please subscribe if you want to see more of me and more of my content. Thank you so much, and ciao, ciao.